I can welcome everyone to, to the event of today. Um, welcome here again. Today we have uh, our collaborator from Belgium, uh, Miriam uh, Orts, visiting us again here in the clinic. And actually we have chosen the, the topic of this event, uh, fertility journey to Spain. And what do I need to know? Because many patients of uh, Miriam in Belgium asked questions about it, and we decided to give answer to some of uh, so some of them. So Miriam, um, I'll give you a floor directly, and we can start uh, whenever you want. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here again uh, with Arina and uh, the Repre Clinic. Um, we, uh, I do, do have uh, patients, of course, that uh, can be helped in Belgium or probably want to figure out some more of, of uh, traveling abroad for uh, their child wish, wish. So I did make some questions and one of those is uh, who, uh, why uh, patients uh, travel to Spain for assistant reproduction uh, treatments. And in particular, uh, particular uh, why Belgian peach patients do uh, do that? Well, uh, um, there are multiple reasons not to come uh, to Spain for fertility treatment. Um, it can be better IVF success rate. It can be treatment costs, uh, donor options. Obviously, the legislation, no waiting list less stressful environment, of course, uh, among others. And uh, I would say maybe the main reason for Belgian patient come to Spain for fertility treatments is a uh, limitation uh, relative to the patient age. So as you know, Miriam, a Belgian law established um, an age limit for women who wish to undergo uh, fertility treatment, assisted reproduction treatment, and for example, for an egg puncture, uh, the age limit is 45 years old. And for an embryo transfer, the age limit uh, is uh, 47 years. And once you are 48, you cannot longer be treated in Belgium. So patients who come under the Belgian insurance system also are reimbursed for the cost of these treatments under certain conditions, as you know, when uh, a maximum of six cycles can be performed. Um, and um, in this case, uh, I would say that the age limit for women is lower than uh, 47 or 45 years old, as I mentioned before. So regarding the women age limit for cystic production treatment in Spain, there is no legal guide you know, that uh, advise or discourage it. However, uh, private clinics, we, we advise against performing treatment for women over 50, so we have some of that, you know, uh, and uh, in terms to protect the health of women and ensure the health of pregnancy. So this is, I would say, the, the main reason why patients are traveling here, and sometimes it's also because of the, um, obviously, the success rates, and maybe sometimes it costs. Yeah. So can you also tell me what uh, the adventures are the uh, advantages are for the Spanish uh, clinics? It's, it's just the age? No, well, uh, it's everything that I mentioned before uh, at the beginning, but Spain is also is a reference you know, when it comes to assisted reproduction. And uh, not just in Spain, but in particular Barcelona is a Catalan capital you now, very uh, uh, concentrated the best fertility clinics in the country, and um, also that uh, Spain was a pioneer in you know, kind of assisted reproduction law uh, enforced since 1988. So since then, more than 30 years uh, have passed, and yeah. these years have allowed clinics to achieve the best quality standards, the highest success rate, and also develop uh, state-of-the-art technologies train specialists and perfect uh, local and international patient care. So I think this all puts us on the front line. Okay, so a few years ago, I didn't know anything about sperm and egg donations. I didn't know much about it. Uh, and there was a, 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 a fair and I was standing next to um, a stand with egg and sperm donation. It was the first time I was like, oh, does it exist? 
But uh, mm -hmm. after some years now, eh, lots of people ask about and I got to know the, uh, to know the terms. And um, in Spain, the egg and sperm donation is uh, anonymous. Um, for some patients, it's essential to know the identity of the donor and, and how do you select donors? How does that work? Well, I would say that because of differences in legislation across the world, many patients can choose uh, whether they want their donor uh, to be anonymous or not. And uh, some patients think that they know everything they need to know uh, by having the information that appears in the career test and the information that provided from the anonymous donation. And other ones, you know, the, the donors that they can be available to the children when they are of legal age. So I think nowadays countries tend to, it's also the, it's not that simple, it's, uh, it's true, you know, it's that our present that nowadays countries tend to modify the legislation for open donation. And we need just to see where the law will evolve um, if anonymity uh, doesn't exist or not. Uh, let's see. It depends, it depends. It's a totally personal decision. Yeah. Uh, some other things. I had um, a patient once and uh, she had already two boys. Uh, so, for example, when patients, uh, patients who have already boys and want a girl or the other way around, um, if they really want to um, know uh, the, the, well, if, if they want a baby girl or a baby boy, uh, can you help them uh, with with the selection of the sperm or uh, to get the baby they want, or it's not allowed? Uh... Mm, no, gender selection for family balancing reason, as you mentioned, is illegal in Spain. So choosing the sex of the embryo is only possible here for medical reasons, such as cases of genetic illness linked to sex chromosomes. It's the only okay, but it's possible if there are genetic uh, reasons. If it's uh, medical reasons, okay, for medical but it's reasons. quite difficult. So yes, yeah, so it yeah. should be studied, and there is uh, authorization to be done for. So yeah, yeah, okay, but not for fam for family balancing reasons. They have the case you were explaining. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, do you offer any guarantees in the treatments? Uh, and if so, how how do that uh, works? Yes, yes, we offer uh, we offer uh, plastic guarantees on some IVF treatments with donor X. And uh, in terms of uh, cost-effective solution, we also offer a live birth guarantee program. Uh, it's for IVF with OMEX and for IVF with donor X. Um, as I said, it's live birth guarantee, it's not pregnancy, so we are going to live birth. And these programs uh, include uh, three complete IVF cycles with ONEX or DonorX in case of donation. Uh, it also includes uh, career preservation of good quality uh, remaining embryos. Uh, it, include, uh, it includes medication, both for patient and donor, and all following frozen, frozen embryo trusted cycles. Uh, obviously, patient must. Uh, meet medical admission criteria to opt for these programs. And uh, yeah, it's uh, like, you know, here we intend to, to provide peace of mind to, to an essential part of the process, which is economic uh, investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, undoubtedly, all patients want to have a healthy baby as a result. But in the event, let's say, in the event of an undesirable negative result of these programs. No? Uh, we can give uh, with this guarantee uh, program the possibility of having money back and of maybe for other options. So this life birth guarantee where uh, there are funding guarantees. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I also know that uh, if people go abroad, they um, already did some tests and studies in Belgium uh, before starting their treatment. I, uh, I suppose they need to have some tests or, or, or studies also when they come to your clinic. Um, are the, the tests from Belgium enough for you? Uh, for your clinic, or do they need to do it again? 
well, it depends. A conflictive evaluation should begin with a medical history of the patient or patients, no? and uh, we should perform before that a medical consultation. And uh, uh, a women patient, she will be asked to undergo a physical exam, firstly, uh, because it includes a gynecological exam and pelvic ultrasound. And uh, a woman may also undergo, uh, you know, the evaluation of tubal pregnancy and the uterine cavity. And in the case of the male partner, semen analysis will be performed also. And they will also have to perform blood tests and other studies, but it should be everything determined by the adults after the initial consultation. So they can um, do a perform of the study in their own country, in Belgium, and share it with us because all the consultation can be done back online. Yeah, okay. I also do have uh, female uh, couples who want to get pregnant. Um, does um, your clinic uh, offer the, the ROPA, the, the special treatments with the eggs? Can you tell something about that? Yeah, ROPA reception of also from the partner. Yeah, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, in Spain, thanks to comprehensive legislation we have, a same-sex female couple can undergo this treatment. Um, as the legislation on the subject is diverse, and depending on the country of residence, many female couples come to Spain for this option. Because I think it's not allowed in Belgium, or it is? I don't know that. Yes, I think it is. Yes, I think it's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's allowed. Okay. And in France, in your... In, not uh, everywhere, I think. And the yeah. country, yeah, yeah, it's not allowed. Okay. At the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then something else, I have a client and um, let's say she's uh, over 40, uh, the egg quality is going less, uh, but she wants to try to get pregnant with her own eggs. Um, even if the success rates are low, do you accept uh, patients like that? Uh, are you working with them? Uh, well, each, each case has to be studied separately. And if there is no medical contradiction, uh, we could carry out uh, the treatment. We also have to uh, have the withholding guarantee program, the adverse program for this case. And it consists of the first cycle uh, with OMEX and PGT. And the second and the third uh, cycle with Donorex, if it's not success. So yeah, we, we're gonna treat. Okay, okay. They will uh, love to hear that also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, one other thing. Uh, well, okay, when, how do pa patients need uh, to stay in Barcelona for the treatment? How many times they have to uh, travel mm -hmm. for the, to the clinic and back or to Belgium to the clinic? Um, how does that work? Well, uh, you know, most, oh, <clears throat> sorry. Most of our patients come uh, from different parts of the world and the uh, patient assistant and medical consultation can be done online. So many of the required screening tests I was mentioning before and procedures uh, including initial fertility stimulation treatment can be coordinated with, uh, with the patient local gynecologist. And those we considerably reduce all the time on the same the frequency of, of the trips. And depending, obviously, depending on the treatment, patient will have to stay, um, will, come, will have to travel to Spain uh, once or twice. And uh, the stay also depends on the type of treatment they undergo. It can last from two days up to, I don't know, a week. Yeah. Okay. And, and how does that first contact with the repro clinic work? So what steps should be taken uh, uh, before they start, when mm -hmm. they come over? Well, it's very simple here. Uh, the first contact the patient will have uh, will be with our team of patient assistants via phone or video conference. And uh, the online medical consultation will be offered to access the case in detail. This online consultation was with um, patient assistant and the physician is free for our patients. And uh, the clinical information will be requested in advance, like if the patient uh, um, 
have some medical history, some tests, studies, if they did uh, previously uh, IVF treatments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And after their visit um, with a physician, a medical after the medical consultation, I detail the budget will be provided for each patient case. And um, well, you know, here we, we, you know, how we work and we, we focus on reducing the uh, logistical and economical stress for, for our patient. And uh, we bring our team of professionals closer to the patient. We, we ensure, we're, try, we're trying to ensure for us the regular and multilingual communication uh, every day of the week. Um, we are also trying to offer some solution from the administrative part for, for travel assistance and stay logistics. Yeah. Well, so we try to make it very really easier for, for, for the patients. Yeah. So they also have their contact person and it's not a big clinic. Hey, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like it's very small, but it's not like in Belgium, the big, big, big. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a hospital, party. it's a clinic. <laughs> yeah, it's a clinic, it still is, but uh, as I came uh, on this afternoon also, um, uh, they, they recognize you and I, it's only my, let's say, uh, third time here. So I like that, that, uh, mm -hmm. that um, yeah, you have a little closer contact, of course. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, like in Belgium, uh, the, the clients always often complain um, about the treatment as uh, a number in big clinics, as I say, uh, they miss a more personal approach and they see a uh, little empathy during fertility processes, mm -hmm. certainly when they are related to a failed process. Uh, how do you deal or how do the, the person who contact, is in contact with you deals with these kind of things? In the well, you know, the, 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 the experience of patients you are describing, it's quite normal everywhere. Uh, Spain also can have, uh, you know, uh, the clinics. But here, we, from the beginning, we wanted to prevent our patients from having this unimpersonal experience you, you were describing. So for this reason, we, we focus on giving the confidence and tranquility uh, of always being attended by the same team of professionals. And we know that they have this unique concept uh, that we call one patient, one team. And the service consists of the support of three professionals, patient assistant, a medical assistant, and a doctor, always the same team. And uh, this way ensure and intimate and give the last experience for everyone. So it, it doesn't matter if you have failed process or it's your first uh, uh, IVF cycle. It's always the same. We treat everyone same way. Yeah. But with this, with this, uh, yeah, support. Yes, it's not the same in Belgium. In big clinics, you have the the, the stagiaires. I don't know. It's an English word. Uh, the people like um, studying the student students. Mm -hmm. And if they take a phone call and they don't know who's on the other side of the telephone, it's like a not so a happy question, a happy moment sometimes. Eh? Because of course, yeah. the quality journey uh, may impact people uh, negatively, negatively, uh, psycho psycho psychological, <laughs> uh, their well being. Uh, how do, uh, do you support those? Uh, those um, uh, patients, uh, the 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 the, phys the physiological support. Yeah, and, and uh, I think I understand what you what you mean. Um, yeah, we be, you know here we believe in the in the strengths and benefits of integrative approach. So for this reason, we bring our network of professionals uh, closer to the patient, and uh, our patient can count on different support areas. Reflexology, uh, acupuncture, fertility coaching, and nutrition, among others. No, and um, assistance that we offer uh, can be obviously in the patient's language. It can be done online and or locally. Uh, the patient home uh, place or here in Barcelona. So depending on the treatment, obviously, for example, uh, let's say if you take the coaching, can be done online. 
but obviously reflexology, it's kind of difficult not to imagine how to perform it online. So this is what we offer. And we always encourage uh, our patient to try at this uh, multidisciplinary approach and be, be kind of protagonist no, uh, of their fertility journey to, to do something from their side also. Yeah. So this is already a little bit an answer. My question is how, how do you see my role in this process? Because I can do it from out of Belgium, but I also want to support more here in Spain. Um, yeah. Tell me, uh, what can I do? Well, uh, well, you know, I think you could answer the question much better than me. <laughs> uh, you, are, yeah. you are one of the professionals who work with to make the patient experience easier, comfortable, emotionally, and physically healthy, and uh, more positive, you know? So I invite you to share more information about these services. Yeah, yeah. Because also baby making coaching is uh, also known uh, for uh, men or partner support and mm -hmm. um, what what do you do in uh, the clinic to assist the partners uh, of the woman who wants to get pregnant uh, during this also for them emotional times well uh, from the on the medical side we have the andrology service here and uh, in terms of integrative support my patients have the same offer as the male the fertility coaching, uh, acupuncture, nutrition, fixology, etc. So, how do you help male patients? And yeah, the process, there is some the treatment. Yeah, there is also some support also for the both then. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's for both of them or separately. What do you do, Miriam? To support the male uh well uh, uh, i invite them in my place and um, mm -hmm. sometimes i i give even uh on, um like notices of reflectology to support at the moment they go to to the clinic to to receive uh, the, the 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 egg or the donation or, or whatever or to to warm up the womb or so the partner doesn't feel uh like is worth nothing, let's say. He can do something also. And um, like if it's not working, also men can be very depressed about it or uh, partners can be very depressed about it. So it's not only the, 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 the woman who's, uh, who's having problems with conceiving that's emotional, it's also the partner. But um, yeah, we know the way around in the, in the way it goes now. It's always, how is your wife? And, and uh, oh, pity that she's not pregnant. But for the, for the partner, it's, 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 yeah, it's the same, uh, but there's not enough oh. attention for it. Eh? Okay, it's Sounds always a good idea to obtain uh, relevant information beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. So you are able to take the decisions of traveling abroad to Repro Clinic or another clinic or destination. How may patients uh, receive uh, this uh, information from you? Well, um, we broadcast a bunch of information through multiple channels, uh, our social networks blogs, uh, also our YouTube channel, we do run these webinars. Uh, we also conduct surveys to, uh, you know, to find out what information patients are looking for and provide it to them in different formats. So we also offer consultation with our professionals to answer any possible questions they may have. Or I invite you to to follow our social media channels, to see all the information in our YouTube channel, and uh, just contact us and ask any questions you have. Yeah, you have a lot of uh, small movies also about different uh, issues also, eh? Yes, yes, we have podcasts, yeah. we have uh, videos, we have uh, tips for patients, we are trying to do, this is why it's so important to do this way, because we need to know what they want to know, what they, uh, can't find easier, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're always working on it. Yeah. Well, and um, as always, uh, this is a kind of question I, I always say to my my uh, clients: 
where uh, this because hormones are very uh, sensitive about stress and 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 sunny weather eh? so is sun sea holidays an adventure to get pregnant more easy it certainly supports your hormones in a positive way what is your opinion opinion uh, here well my, my personal opinion uh, i think that it's an advantage for everything in our lives, sun, sea, holidays, or else. So, of course, many, many patients prefer to take benefit of their trip and enjoy fantastic touristic uh, offer of Barcelona, because uh, also Barcelona is an easily accessible destination from uh, direct flights, you know, and frequent flights from anywhere in the world. And uh, we always welcome our patients to combine you know, the, yeah, the treatment with, the with uh, yeah. exactly the treatment with a relaxing vacation experience here in sunny Barcelona. Yeah, and the, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, Barcelona is an excellent place to, to enjoy the stay. And actually now, you know, when the, the state of alarm has ended in Spain. And we no longer have a car queue and the hotel and restaurants offers working much more better. I think that this summer, uh, many patients will be able to reduce stress and uh, which negatively influence our house and spending a few days in Barcelona. Mm. Yeah. And I can I can tell, I saw it this week, it's very quiet in Barcelona city at this yeah. time. Eh? Good. Yeah, uh, yeah, what makes yeah. your uh, clinic uh, unique? And do you have uh, a value proposal for Belgian uh, or other patients? Well, um, I think that I explain everything uh, during the webinar, but um, I would like maybe to highlight you know, that our main objective is to guarantee the excellence of the patient experience by uh, providing them with the best care and support and um, creating an environment of absolute trust and comfort no, during their fertility journey. So all this, uh, I would say that our three main states uh, personalized attention, I was explaining, uh, integrative approach or integrative support, and also the stress-free experience with us. So um, we want to help um, everyone to, to fulfill a family dream. And for this, we offer the, the professionalism, the experience, the empathy of our team, uh, which is, I would say, is our most excellent differential value proposal. OK, OK. Mm. So um, let's hope we can uh, pleasure the people by getting pregnant in um, <laughs> combination, Belgium, uh, Spain, Barcelona. Uh, better, better work uh, for, for, yeah, for the, 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 the child wish and um, yeah, support uh, from the both countries. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy I uh, could ask all the questions we are talking about in my practice and you could uh, tell some more about the clinic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Miriam. And uh, yeah, this is some of the questions, the questions maybe patients can ask. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are working every day. So you can contact us by phone. We have a number also on our website. You can send us an email and you can program a consultation with a physician or a patient assistant. And we will be more than happy to explain everything or solve all your possible doubts. And, yeah. um, and so, people can leave a message after, uh, under the Of course, you can leave a message. Movie eh, under the interview. And if they don't want, they can contact me uh, by a uh, personal uh, message or even you. So uh, exactly, we can we can share our information. Yeah. Uh, we can give also your contact details. The patients are interested in receiving support from your side. More than happy. And we have uh, done previously other webinars together, so they can even check out all the webinars on our YouTube channel. 
um, maybe in your Facebook page also, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, Miriam, thank you very much for coming to Barcelona again and uh, for doing this webinar together. It's always yeah. a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for attending it. And have a really lovely evening, or depending where you will see. Yeah, yeah, have yeah, a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying some more of Barcelona tonight. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, till we meet again. Well, see you, see you, see you soon. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.